In 1940, a small group of physicists working at Stanford University had announced the invention of a device that utilized two electromagnetic resonators in a vacuum tube to sweep ultra-short radio waves across the sky in an invisible beam, reflecting back an echo from any solid object. The Klystron, invented by two brothers, Russell and Sigurd Varian, and their colleague, William Hansen, was light and relatively energy efficient. I suppose it must have been 19, mid-1930s when uh, Sigurd Varian, who was a pilot for Pan Am, uh, was uh, trying to persuade his brother, Russell, uh, a physicist uh, with a degree from Stanford, to get interested in the problem of how to build a tube that would permit the generation and amplification of signals that would be useful for radar. Perhaps in his case, one of his interests was that he had to land planes uh, in fog and a lot of uh, inclement conditions. Then president of Stanford University, Ray Lyman Wilbur, gave them a hundred dollars to buy parts, space in a laboratory, and free consulting from two faculty members in the physics department at the time who were themselves uh, quite expert in uh, electronics and signal processing and, uh, of, of that day. And uh, in return for Stanford getting half the royalties on patents that uh, would arise from this research. Sig and Russell Varian were two very different people. Russell was the inventor, Sig the daredevil pilot, Together they developed the Kleistron that enabled radar to locate Nazi U-boats at night up to nine kilometers away. The year was 1941. The U-boats had devastated Allied shipping to Britain. The U-boats had to come to the surface each night to replenish their oxygen supply. That's all the British needed once Kleistrons were installed in their fighter planes. It was a major blow to Hitler's U-boat campaign. The usefulness of the Klystron tube would transcend its wartime applications. In the ensuing years, it helped make commercial air navigation safe, opened the possibility of worldwide communication from satellites, and led to the development of high-energy particle accelerators useful in medicine and nuclear physics. At Stanford, a two-mile linear accelerator used Klystrons to power atom-smashing research. In 1948, Russ and Sig founded Varian Associates in San Carlos, just north of Palo Alto. By the early 1950s, the electronic instruments company dominated several important technology markets. Varian Associates was the first company to move into the Stanford Research Park in 1954. Hewlett Packard came soon after, and these two companies served as the nucleus of the park. 